Coming up on HIGMT, Tesla flexes its accomplishments during the long-awaited battery day, Gigafactory Texas has an overall shape release, and it's a little bit different than what we were used to. Welcome to How I Got My Tesla, the podcast of indeterminate length for Saturday, September 26th, 2020, episode 7. In Ottawa, Ontario, I'm Matt Wilson. Let's start off with a few Tesla things you should know. So do you remember a few weeks ago when I reported on the Model Y and how its rear underbody was to be cast of a single piece of aluminum? Well, according to cleantechnica.ca, the rear underbody might not be high on Tesla's casting to-do list, at least not yet. Germany's Tesla Mag recently took a tour of Gigafactory Berlin and it was revealed that the eight gigapresses will be used to cast the front part of the frame as one piece of aluminum. Currently, Tesla is testing casts of the rear underbody out of Fremont and is planning to install gigapresses in China. As more test casting of various frame components are happening throughout the world, it should not be long before Tesla will be able to cast the entire frame as one giant piece of aluminum. I can't help but feel a little confused with the site plans for Gigafactory Texas. Some plans show two buildings, while some plans show three. Well, regardless of the number of buildings, the square footage being allocated for this first phase is huge. 7.9 million square feet, or around 80 Home Depots, in size. And that only accounts for 10 to 15% of the available land Tesla has in Texas. According to cleantechnica.com, Tesla might have room to do more than manufacture electric vehicles in Texas. Tesla pretty much has the room to do whatever they want, including setting up research, development, and design facilities, and probably test tracks too. With Gigafactory Texas supplying electric vehicles of all types to the eastern half of North America, Tesla will need all the land afforded to them. Tesserati.com was able to shed a little bit more light into the overall shape and design of Gigafactory Texas. According to Elon Musk, there will be three buildings, each about a kilometer long and a line due north. Proposed gaps between the buildings will actually be covered to allow tractor trailers to drive through the facility, and the overall appearance of Gigafactory Texas will be similar to Gigafactory Nevada, although much larger. This design is different from Gigafactory Shanghai and Berlin, where completely separate buildings were or will be constructed. And during the recent Battery Day event, Elon mentioned that Gigafactory Texas is proceeding at a faster rate than Gigafactory Berlin, but personally, I don't really see it. Unless Tesla has materials and labor ready, it will be very difficult to have Gigafactory Texas buttoned up by the end of the year. But I will be keeping an eye on Gigafactory Texas via Jeff Roberts' YouTube channel to see if I'm wrong, which I could very well be. With half a million pre-orders, it is expected that Tesla will be very busy for at least two years catching up on all that pent-up demand for the Cybertruck. Of course, this will depend heavily on the completion of Gigafactory Texas. As Insiders.com mentioned in their article, the half million pre-orders relates to the easily refundable $100 deposit for those who are interested. Time will tell if what the conversion rate from those deposits to actual orders will be. After the rough launch of the Tesla Model 3, any launch afterwards has to be better by comparison. As cleantechnica.com reports, that was just the case for the launch of the Model Y. Thanks to the lessons learned from the Model 3 launch, scaling and building new manufacturing facilities, Tesla was able to release new products without much negative fanfare. Elon also mentioned during the Battery Day event that Tesla is the first American company in over a century to have reached both volume production and become sustainably profitable. And back to Gigafactory Texas for an update. Thanks to Jeff Roberts and his daily drone footage, it, it would appear that more GeoPeer work is happening within the Megapad area, along with the last areas of site preparation with site draining, filling, compaction, and leveling. There seems to be a new large work area to the east of the Megapad with similar site preparation over the last two months. And it would appear that the first poured column footings are now in place. And for those interested in the Battery Day event held this past week, TheVerge.com has a short article outlining the five major announcements, so feel free to click in the link in the show notes below. First of all, we have new batteries. Tesla has been using 18650 cells and currently is using 2170 cells from Panasonic. In the next year and a half, Tesla will be moving to 4680 cells, which are much larger in size, offer six times more power and 16% more range. These cells will be produced in-house at Tesla and will be made in three different variants. The three variants will be used across Tesla's vehicle line depending on the overall application. Along with new battery chemistry, form factor, and manufacturing techniques used on the Model 3 and Model Y, Tesla is hoping to reduce the cost per kilowatt hour down by 56%. 
Tesla also announced a plaid version of their Model S, a $190,000 monster of a sedan with a top speed of 320 kilometers per hour and an estimated range of 840 kilometers. Orders for the Model S plaid are available now with delivery to be expected by the end of 2021. Also announced during the Battery Day event, Tesla would like to construct a new cathode plant somewhere in the United States, perhaps in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Tesla will attempt to simplify their supply chain and improving manufacturing while creating cathodes for the batteries that are 76% cheaper than current costs. Tesla also wants to eliminate the use of cobalt in their battery packs, which has been a sore spot for Elon for quite some time. The new proposed 4680 cells will eliminate the need for cobalt while reducing the overall cost per kilowatt hour. Probably the most understated announcement, Tesla is looking to release another vehicle in around three years with the goal of having the barrier to entry into Tesla being lowered down to $25,000. Although unnamed at the event, I suspect that this is the Model C I've been reporting for the past few weeks. The reduction in price will be the culmination of the new batteries announced, and the Gigapress is currently under evaluation in Fremont and in Shanghai. Alright, so that should pretty much do it for episode 9. I'm not sure if you had a chance to watch all three hours of the shareholders meeting and the Battery Day event. I suffered through it. It seemed to be abnormally long. I'm used to seeing, you know, presentations that are probably an hour an hour maybe even two hours tops so this one seems to be a little bit of a slog and I must say that after watching it I was a little bit underwhelmed by what they were announced I'm not sure if it was diluted because of the overall length of the presentation I'm sure there's so much hard work that is being done by the engineers of Tesla in order to get the overall cost per kilowatt hour reduced down to 56 percent um uh, that is definitely no easy feat whatsoever, but um, it's really hard to put that into perspective when you're looking to, you know, for, uh, for myself to go into, get myself into a Tesla. I probably won't see the fruits of, you know, their hard work for at least another year and a half, which is, uh, you know, do I delay waiting to get a Tesla for a year and a half in order to get, uh, you know, more value for my dollar spent? Perhaps. Um, this is something I need to kind of think about. I also think that much of the topics that were covered in the presentation seem to be far off into the future. And that, again, is not something I'm used to seeing. Usually when you're watching uh, presentations like this, you know, the products are, you know, short, uh, are coming shortly or are already available for the general public to, um, to purchase. Now, I understand, you know, these aren't, you know, iPhones and iPads, um, these are actually vehicles and Tesla currently doesn't have the capability to produce vehicles in North America anywhere outside of Fremont. So I think that as soon as Gigafactory Texas is up and running, I think the timelines for the new uh, 4680 cells and uh, the uh, $25,000 um, small SUV, I would imagine. Uh, I think the timeline won't actually be three years. It'll probably be brought down to maybe even two years. So we may see a lot of movement in the next year and a half to two years where it'll appear that, you know, Tesla is just absolutely unstoppable when it comes to releasing new products and doing, um, pushing new technologies to support those new products. So uh, it'll be very interesting to see what will happen in the next few years. So that should pretty much do it uh, for today. If I can think of a hashtag, let's say hashtag battery yay. And the overall hashtag for this podcast is HIGMT. And if you have any comments for me, you can feel free to throw me an email at howigotmytesla at gmail.com. And you can always watch my progress at howigotmytesla.com. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram by simply searching for, yeah, you got it, how I got my Tesla. So thank you for listening. This podcast is produced by Matt Wilson and hosted by Squarespace. Music for this episode is Cascade by Cubby.